Some protesters blocking this major trade corridor between the U.S. and Canada say they'll risk their lives to stay out here. Three nights already, no sign of quitting. You would risk your life rather than leave this protest at the moment? 100%. Absolutely 100%. Protests now starting to bite deeply into the economy. Supply chain bottlenecks. Trucks backed up for hours across this bridge at Port Huron. Automakers and part suppliers on both sides of the border starting to slow or altogether suspend production. Windsor's mayor says while well, Canadians have the right to protest, patience for what he calls an illegal blockade is running thin. There will have to be a path forward. If that means physically removing them, then that means physically removing them, and we're prepared to do that. Protesters here want all Canadian coronavirus restrictions and mandates at the national level lifted before they say they'll leave. I'm fighting like our veterans did for the freedom of this country, which Trudeau's taking away from us. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau now a target over too many rules. The Prime Minister so far not budging. Individuals are trying to blockade our economy, our democracy, and our fellow citizens' daily lives. It has to stop. Michigan's governor demanding that the border crossing be reopened, calling the blockade unacceptable. Anti-mandate anger simmering for weeks, starting with opposition to vaccine mandates, even though government statistics show more than 80% of Canada's truckers are vaccinated. Some provinces, such as Saskatchewan and Quebec, have recently announced plans to roll back COVID restrictions. But for those who believe the government has robbed them of their livelihoods, they say it's not enough. You want the entire country? Uh, uh, not only do I want the provincial ones, I want the national ones done. And I would like to see something where they can't happen again. If we can get the restrictions gone, this little bit of a disruption in our day today for the next week or two, whatever it takes, they'll thank us for it. So I want to give you a sense of how these protests are going every day here uh, in Windsor. The crowd really grows during the day. You probably have several hundred people out here right now at night. Most people leave, others go into their cars, but the resources are coming in, both here and Windsor and the Prime Minister today is saying that he is sending more resources, police resources, to other protests in other parts of the country. Clearly, patients across Canada are running out. Jake? All right, Miguel Marquez, thanks so much. These supply chain worries come as we learn inflation is near a 40-year high, climbing 7.5% in just 12 months. We learned today from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. It's the steepest rise since 1982. President Biden today acknowledging that inflation is putting stress on Americans' budgets. It's also a huge political liability for President Biden. A new CNN poll today shows that nearly 6 in 10 Americans disapprove of Biden's performance as president. Much of that is driven by his handling of the economy. 62% of Americans disapprove of Biden's handling of the economy, while 37% approve. CNN's Vanessa Yurkevich now looks into the growing sticker shock on everything from cars to your grocery bills. You see it at checkout. Seemingly everything is more expensive. The benchmark for prices, the Consumer Price Index, up 0.6% in January and 7.5% in the last 12 months. The highest jump in nearly 40 years. This is a challenge that is first and foremost in our sites. We have way more work to do. Big increases in cars, groceries and electricity year over year. And food up nearly 1% in January, a huge spike from December. It's a constant rejuggling of budgets to try to keep up with the food prices lately. Gas did drop by 0.8% last month, but with oil prices rising, that likely won't last. And filling up your car costs 40% more than it did a year ago. I used to buy about $20 for a day, but I'm buying about $35. And for the same amount? Yes. For the same quantity. Last month, new all-time price records, trucks, seafood, meals and furniture, saw the highest jumps ever year over year. And used cars up a whopping 40.5% in the last 12 months. This because of supply chain shortages, particularly the elusive semiconductor computer chip, which means fewer new cars on the market. We've seen anywhere from zero cars in our lot, new cars now, zero new cars in our lot to having you know as many as 9, 10, 12. 
And now, truckers blocking a key trading route between the U.S. and Canada, cutting production at some General Motors and Ford plants, which could lead to even higher prices. We can't have a situation where families don't get food to their table. And while the cost of shelter climbed less than it did in December, it's up 4.4 percent since last year. It's the largest share of monthly expense for Americans. What is unique in the current cycle is that we have this exceptional housing shortage, not enough homes for sale, not enough apartments available for leasing, and consequently the housing cost is rising uh, and possibly accelerating further in the upcoming months. Inflation is not cooling down. This is where the Federal Reserve steps in. Their single greatest tool to lower consumer prices is to cool demand by raising interest rates, which they signaled would start in March. On a car, it's going to be a little more difficult to cool that down only because of lack of supply and, again, the huge demand right now. Some good economic news. GDP is up, unemployment is low, and wages are rising. But it's not keeping up with the rising inflation that we are seeing. Moody's Analytics estimates that U.S. households are spending on average $250 more every month. So everyday consumers, Jake, they don't feel things like GDP. They feel what's happening with their wallets. That's why these rising prices on everyday items is causing many Americans Americans to still sour on the economy. Jake. All right, Vanessa Yurkiewicz, thanks so much. Let's bring in Rana Faruhar. She's a CNN global economic analyst and associate editor at the Financial Times. Also, of course, Richard Quest, the CNN business editor at large. Richard, first to you. Let's look again at some of these price spikes at all time highs. Furniture, new cars, mm -hmm. appliances, restaurant meals, not to mention just the sticker shock on other items such as used cars up 41 percent, gasoline up 40 percent, electricity up almost 11 percent year to year. We've watched these prices going up for months. What seems to be driving this? Two factors. Firstly, the supply chain that we talked about and we've talked, you and I have talked about. Basically, the crunch from China to here. The not enough containers, not enough ships, not enough ports. Vastly increased demand because people working from home. And, and don't forget, those who weren't laid off have got disposable income to spend. So people, the consumer is very busy. And that's the other side. This is Economics 101. That, you know, the oldest rule, uh, when demand chases supply, prices go up. And that's what you're seeing. Consumers with money buying more stuff. Supplies can't get it to you. And you have this depressing cycle, this spiral that just goes on. And I'll tell you why it's particularly worrying, because eventually this feeds through to wages. People naturally, Jake, want more higher wages because they're paying more for everything. Then the Fed comes in, puts interest rates up and it all continues. So, Rana, there's another there's another factor I'm wondering about. Uh, 3M is the company that makes N95 face masks in addition to adhesives and all sorts of office supplies. According to a transcript of their earnings call uh, in January, company executives applauded their own company for raising prices. Uh, the CFO saying, quote, the team has done a marvelous job in driving price. Um, obviously, uh, what Richard said is accurate in terms of issues, but I'm also wondering how much prices are going up because of corporate greed and, and companies and CFOs and CEOs taking advantage of this moment. Well, you know, it's a great question, and it's a question that the Biden administration has been asking. You know, you've seen in recent weeks the White House saying um, that there is uh, too much concentration of power in various industries, that companies have gotten too big, that they do have too much power of the economy. And that's something that I think that you're going to uh, see continue as inflation continues throughout the rest of the year. Um, but, you know, Jake, there's also another factor that's important, and that's politics. You know, the, the blockade that you're seeing um, at the Canadian border is, I think, indicative of what we're going to see going forward. Richard mentioned uh, supply chain issues with China. Some of those are about COVID, but some of them are about a fundamental decoupling that is happening in the world now. It, it's not going to be smooth sailing the way it has for the last 20 years. I think we're entering a period where political conflict is going to uh, play a part in keeping prices higher.